You turn in your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to talk to you today about the serious sin of tattooing. And I'm going to prove to you today that it is a sin according to the scriptures and I'm going to be using science as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 through 17. Please watch this study with an open mind. Okay? That's all I ask. Don't post nasty comments and whatever else. Watch the study. Here at this ministry, I go through the scriptures. I'll use other arguments. I use a lot of my books behind me here. I give quotes. I do a lot of work to put together a sermon. All right, this isn't just a, a milk ministry that just gives you a five-minute cool video with my feelings and thoughts and whatever. This is a ministry that produces documented evidence. So if you really want the truth, stick around. Um, don't waste time in the comment section posting nasty stuff about me or whatever else. First Corinthians, I do this whole sermon out of love. Please listen to what I'm saying. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. When you get saved, you have to be very aware of a number of things. Um, your life becomes new. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses, cleanses you from all unrighteousness, from all sin. Your sins are paid for on the cross. Okay, Your eternity is now fixed. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. First Corinthians, or, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Excuse me. So, that's there. But, now you have to do something called working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul writes to Timothy about this. What that means is not eternal salvation, but rather the sanctification of the body. Because now you have to see sin in a different light. You have to look and say, I used to do this, and I used to do that. But those things are condemned in the scriptures because those things are negative. They hurt me. Well, that's what tattooing is. And to show you proof of that, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to read some science here. And there is such a thing as real science. You don't live under a rock or something. Don't just reject anything that's scientific because they don't claim to believe the Bible or something like that. Um, be very open-minded read things, study, right? I will reject things that go into evolutionary philosophy, absolutely. But when they're doing some kind of, uh, you know, science that you can put into a test tube and you can demonstrate it and observe it and it's, you know, you can repeat it and things when you're dealing with chemicals and things like that, um, okay, I'll listen. I'll listen to what they have to say. Um, here we have, this is Scientific American. I'm going to be putting, I have it printed out here, highlighted where I need to read, but I'll be putting this up on screen for you to see. October 7th, 2011, in the ink, do all tattoo pigments use mercury and other toxic heavy metals? Hmm. Let's begin here. It says, it is true that some red inks used for permanent tattoos contain mercury while other reds may contain uh, different heavy metals like cadmium or iron oxide. These metals, which give the tattoo its, quote, permanence in skin, have been known to cause allergic reactions, eczema, and scarring, and can also cause sensitivity to mercury from other sources like dental fillings or consuming some fish. While red causes the most problems, most other colors of standard tattoo ink are also derived from heavy metals, including lead, antimony, beryllium, chromium, cobalt, nickel, and arsenic, and can cause skin reactions in some people. Hmm, do you see the problem? And we're just beginning with the scientific research here. Uh, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay, the scripture says that. Wouldn't this be defiling the temple? So no, it's just in the skin. It doesn't hurt anything. But we'll see about that. Continuing with the article. Helen Sue McIntosh, a professor in environmental health at Harvard University and a columnist for the website Treehugger, reports that as a result of a 2007 lawsuit brought by the American Environmental Safety Institute, 
Two of the leading tattoo ink manufacturers must now place warning labels on their product containers, catalogs, and websites explaining that, quote, inks contain many heavy metals, including lead, arsenic, and others, unquote, and that the ingredients have been linked to cancer and birth defects. Of course, exposure to mercury and other heavy metals is hardly the only risk involved with getting a tattoo. The term tattoo itself means to puncture the skin. Tattoo ink is placed via needles into the dermis layer of the skin where it remains permanently, although some colors will fade over time. Some people have reported sensitivity springing up even years after, their, after they first got their first tattoo, or their, their tattoo. Also, medical, and look at this, medical MRIs uh, can cause tattoos to burn or sting as the heavy metals in the ink are affected by the test's magnetism. I think it's magnetic resonance imaging is what MRI stands for, if I remember correctly. If not, correct me, put it in the comments down below. And um, let's continue with the article. Beyond the long-term risks of walking around with heavy metals injected into your body's largest organ, the skin, getting a tattoo in and of itself can be risky business. If the tattoo parlor's needles and equipment aren't properly sterilized in an autoclave between customers, you could be exposing yourself to hepatitis B or C, tuberculosis, my mycobacterium, syphilis, malaria, HIV, or even leprosy. <laughs> yeah, you want leprosy. Down here, the next paragraph, it says about dermatologist, dermatologist Audrey Coonan. Dr. Coonan advises to be careful about choosing a tattoo parlor. Make sure the place is reputable. Perhaps check with the health department to see if there have been past claims against the parlor in question if you still have doubts. She adds that since tattoos are essentially open wounds, they must be cared for properly, especially in the first few weeks, to stave off infection. Those who want to go ahead with getting a tattoo anyway, despite the risks, should consider steering clear of collars derived from heavy metals. Dr. Coonan reports that black might be the safest permanent tattoo ink it is often derived from a substance called carbon black and rarely causes any kind of sensitivity issues. Who wants a tattoo? I don't think so. Right there, Scientific American. Next, we will go to an article, uh, Consumer Safety, August 15th, 2016. Uh, what chemicals are in your tattoo? This is by the uh, ACS, which is the American Chemical Society. Um, another article here. Let me show you some of this. It says here, but if tattoos are now commonplace, it's talking about people, you know, for years, you know, for millennia, people have been tattooed. But if tattoos are now commonplace, knowing the ingredients and provenance of the colorful cocktail injected beneath the skin is not. It is not widely known by the general public that the pigments found in tattoo inks can be repurposed from the textile plastics or car paint industry, said McGarry, who works at Joint Research Center, which provides independent scientific advice to the European Commission. Members of the ESOF panel voiced concern about patchy regulatory oversight of tattoo inks in the European Union and about a tattooing culture in which consumers rarely question tattoo artists about the origin of the pigments they decor that decorate their bodies. Pretty bad. Continuing. According to a report the JRC released this year, European regulators and others are concerned that pigments used in the formulation of tattoo and permanent makeup inks are not produced for such purpose and do not undergo any risk assessment that takes into account their injection into the human body for long-term permanence. The report notes that in the U.S. and Canada, policies that govern tattooing are also spotty. So it's not just the European Union, it's over in America and Canada as well. Continuing down here a little further, it says the 118-page JRC report, which compiled surveillance, ingredient analysis, and adverse reaction data, found that tattoo and permanent makeup products containing dangerous substances, substances or contaminated by microbes are available on the EU market. The main risks identified in descending order are the presence of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, primary, aroma, primar, primary aromatic amines, microorganisms, heavy metals, and preservatives. And again, they have to preserve the ink. 
there's all the stuff in it you have to put preservatives in it that's where mercury would come in that's used as a preservative in pharmaceutical industry and apparently tattoo ink as well continuing here it says most consumers are aware of the infection risks but few are aware of the chemical risks said Anke Meisner a poli policy officer at the German Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture and a panel member of the ESOF um, conference. According to the JRC report from 2005 to 2015, chemical ingredients were the primary concern in 95% of the 126 tattoo ink cases reported to the EU's rapid alert system for dangerous products. And next paragraph down it says one quarter of these problematic inks came from China. And they're always good. China's always fine. You can always count on something that's made in China to be safe. I don't think so. And down here you have these organic chemistry compounds. I'll, again, I'll put this up on screen. Some azo pigments found in tattoos such as solvent red 1 can degrade into pro problematic compounds such as o anisidine a potential carcinogen. So in other words... You can have it injected as solvent red one and it downgrades over time and becomes toxic, a carcinogenic type of thing. Carcinogen means it causes cancer or has the potential to cause cancer. And you want that injected into your skin. Dermatologist Jorgen Vedelskov Syrup of Bispelberg this probably, yeah, Berg, probably saying that wrong. Forgive me if I'm saying it incorrectly. Hospital says he's cared for 500 plus problem tattoo cases. Syrup told ESOF attendees he's seen lumpy, so called papulonodular um, skin elevation from pigment overload, chronic inflammation, long term light sensitivity, and other side effects from tattooing. As a doctor, if you do a cosmetic procedure, by law, you have to tell the patient the risks. It's amazing that the same is not universally required in tattooing, Syrup said. Continuing down here a little further, it says, The top chemicals of concern found in tattoo inks, according to the report, are polycyclic or aromatic harbor hydrocarbons, such as benzopyrene, which is listed as a human carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. The report notes PAHs, can migrate from the skin to lymph nodes. These problematic chemicals are found mostly in black inks and are most likely impurities from industrial production. In fact, some tattoo formulations are only at between 70 to 90 percent pure, the report says. Tattoo inks may also contain potentially harmful metal impurities such as chromium, nickel, copper, and cobalt. Tattoo pigments themselves can be health hazards. If the ink is really bright in color, it usually contains dangerous stuff, tattoo artist Bergstrom said. Uh, fortunately, cinnabar, a mercury sulfide pigment, which was once a popular bright red in tattoo formulations, has been phased out of use. But I wonder how many people have that in their skin and ultimately going into their bloodstream. Um, which we'll talk about that here in a minute. Currently, stakeholders are more concerned about azo pigments, the organic pigments making up about 60% of the colorants in tattoo inks. Although many of these azo pigments are not of health concern while chemically intact, they can degrade with the help of bacteria or ultraviolet light into potentially cancer-causing primary aromatic amines, uh, notes the report. Down a little further, it says, Another problematic component of tattoo inks is the preservatives that can be added to keep microbes from growing in the often nutrient-rich solutions. In one survey of 229 tattoo inks, by Swiss regulators, nearly a quarter of inks analyzed contained the antiseptic, I am not even going to get close to that one, Benz, benzosothiazolanine, known, which is a skin irritant. Forgive me for saying it wrong, I'm sure. Also, 7% of the inks in the study contained the preservative formaldehyde, which is classified as a carcinogen by the IARC. <laughs> Slightly. Okay. That's the second article. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? Okay, uh, uh, if I love my viewers out there and if I love people in general, I'm going to warn you about this stuff. I'm not just going to say, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, because most of you, I know what you're going to do. You're going to say, well, everybody else around me I know has it. 
They're not getting sick. They're not. I know a lot of people with tattoos. They're fine. My pastor's got a tattoo. Friends at church have a tattoo. I know lots of people with tattoos. I, oh, well, you know, you have to die of something. I know all the excuses, okay? But like I said, this study here, I might have said this in another video, but I'll say it here again if I haven't said it already, uh, or if I have said it already, I'll say it that way. Uh, this study is to stop you from getting a tattoo if you've never had one. And if you have one, I don't want you to see, I don't want to see you getting another one. And there's other things I'm going to be saying. This isn't just everything yet. Finally, we have uh, August 24th, 2022, another article by the American Can Chemical Society. I almost said Cancer Society. That would be appropriate. First paragraph here, it says, um, but the inks used for tattoos are unregulated in the U.S., resulting in products whose components are largely a mystery. Now researchers have analyzed almost 100 inks and report that even when these products include an ingredient label, the lists often aren't accurate. The team also detected small particles that could be harmful to cells. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. Um, there's a similar thing in the grocery store when you get something that's labeled as organic, certified organic. Um, a lot of times the, the practices that these farms are actually doing and carrying out, they're not actually organic. So you have to be very careful where your food's coming from. Um, I'm not saying you have to eat everything. It can only be organic. Okay, please understand that. There are some things that aren't quite as bad as others and whatever else. But there are, there's a lot of issues with people lying in marketing. And they're doing it with tattoo ink. So, well, my tattoo artist, he has this type of ink and it says perfectly fine. There's nothing toxic, totally non-toxic. They could be lying. You don't know. Best just to stay away from it because you don't need it. But we'll get back to some other arguments against tattooing. Some really good arguments. Continuing here with the article. Swerk and undergraduates in his laboratory. This is John Swerk, PhD. Um, uh, Swerk and, his under, and undergraduates in his laboratory interviewed tattoo artists to see what they knew about the inks they use on their customers. The artists could quickly identify a brand they preferred, but they didn't know much about its contents. Surprisingly, no dye shop makes pigment specific for tattoo ink, Swerk explains. Big companies manufacture pigments for everything, such as paint and textiles. These same pigments are used in tattoo inks. That's very dangerous. He also notes that tattoo artists must be licensed in the locales where they operate for safety reasons, yet no federal or local agency regulates the contents of the inks themselves. Tattoo inks contain two parts, a pigment and a carrier solution. Very similar to a lot of the... Um, uh, pharmaceutical type of things. They have the active and inactive ingredients. But let me continue. Um, <clears throat> the pigment could be a molecular, molecular compound such as a blue pigment, a solid compound such as titanium dioxide, which is white or a combination of the two. Com compound types such as light blue ink, which contains both the molecular blue pigment and titanium dioxide. The carrier solution transport the transports the pigment to the middle layer of skin and typically helps make the pigment more soluble. It can also control the viscosity of the ink solution and sometimes includes an anti-inflammatory ingredient. Swerk's team at Binghamton University, State University of New York, has been investigating the particle size and molecular composition of tattoo pigments using a variety of techniques such as Raymond spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy and electron microscopy, different types of you know, uh, microscopes. From these analysis, analyses, if you want to say it that way, they have confirmed the presence of ingredients that aren't listed on some labels. For example, in one case, ethanol was listed, but the chemical analysis showed it was, uh, but the chemical analysis showed it was present in the ink. Okay, um, okay. in one case, ethanol was not listed, but the analysis, when they looked at it under the microscope, it was there. So ethanol, <laughs> that's what they add to your gasoline. You know, whatever percent ethanol, ethanol added. You want that injected into your skin? You think that you can do that and follow the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 3? I don't think so. But continuing, continuing it says here, the team has also been able to identify what specific pigments are present in some inks. 
Every time we looked at one of the inks, we found something that gave me pause, Swerk says. For example, 23 of 56 different inks analyzed to date suggest an azo-containing dye is present. Although many azo pigments do not cause health concerns when they are chemically intact, bacteria or ultraviolet light can degrade them into another nitrogen-based compound that is a potential carcinogen, according to the Joint Research Center, which provides independent scientific advice to the European Union. In addition, the team has analyzed 16 inks using electron microscopy and about half contained particles smaller than 100 nanometers. That's a concerning size range, says Swerk, because particles of this size can get through the cell membrane and potentially cause harm. Huh. And I just had to add this little part here on the back of this, of this article. It says ACS Fall 2022 will be a vaccine vaccination required and mass recommended event for all attendees. So uh, I'm not allowed to talk about that here on YouTube. Um, shoulder sauce is wonderful and never gets, you know, does anything bad to people. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there you go. I also uh, watched a video. I'll put the screenshot of it up here. It's called What Tattoos Do to the Skin Inst Institute of Human Anatomy. And you can, uh, there's a thing there that shows the different layers of skin and you have the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. So the epidermis is the top layer. That's where the cells uh, shed and everything else. You know, your skin flakes off and things. That is constantly redoing itself. Every day you make new skin cells and old skin cells fall off. Underneath that you have the derm dermis layer, which is where the tattoo ink is supposed to go to, and then the hypodermis layer. And they were saying in one of the videos that if you go too deep with the tattoo needle, that it goes down into that hypodermis layer and the, the ink will kind of ooze and just kind of get blurry. So they want their target is to get down into the dermis layer. The problem is that your skin is different thicknesses. So your skin that's here on the inside of your forearm is thinner than it would be on your back. Okay. Um, so unless you really know what you're doing as a tattoo artist, you're going to you make a lot of mistakes there. But um, in this video that is from that, uh, the one I just showed there, they got into this thing of uh, white blood cells, um, what they do when the ink comes in there. Because the way that God designed your body, if you get a cut and it punctures through all three layers or something, a real bad cut or whatever. Um, this is a for instance, I cut my thumb there years ago. You can see had to be sewed up right there's a huge big scar I actually cut the tenon in half on my thumb right there's the scar now what happens is i went through all three layers of skin i went down into the bone on this cut here many years ago and god created things that if there's any kind of dirt or bacteria or whatever else uh, the white blood cells have to go to that infection and they have to attack all that bacteria in there and so you would think if you put ink down into the dermal, the dermis layer down in underneath the epidermis, the outside, that the white blood cells would go to it and it would attack it and it would get rid of the ink. Well, that would be true, but except for the fact that ink is such a toxic chemical that the, the white blood cells don't know what to do with it. So they essentially just go there and they just kind of encircle it and then they stay there. And that process is called phagocytosis. They talk about it in the video. You can watch the thing for yourself. Um, and you say, well, see, that's a good thing. The white blood cells are there. They hold it in place and everything's fine. They just, they keep it and it doesn't move anywhere. Well, except for the fact that they've done autopsies and they've actually found tattoo ink migrated from the tattoo site to other parts of the body. Um, over time, it will do that. You say, well, how could it do that? The white blood cells are holding on to it. Um, yeah, until the white blood cells die. And then more white blood cells have to go in there and attack the ink again. So um, in between those two times, some of that ink can kind of degrade and go into the body and it'll get into the bloodstream and away it goes. And as toxic as it is, I mean, arsenic? You really want arsenic to be injected into your body? Wherever your tattoo is, you know, face or chest or back or arms or what? You want arsenic? 
or mercury or any of the other things that we read about, cobalt and all these things, uh, I would pretty much stay away from that stuff. It's pretty bad. But now no one said about this, and I have a theory, and I'm not a professional doctor or whatever else. Anybody out there that's more qualified than me, put it in the comments down below. Um, say, no, you, Denlinger, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Brian Denlinger is my name, so, you know, Denlinger. Uh, you have no idea. This isn't true, whatever else. But what I'm thinking is, let me just present my theory. Just throwing it out there. People can correct me if you want to. That's fine. I'm not saying that this is, that I can scientifically verify this. It's just, for me, it's just kind of common sense. If you have a tattoo on your arm, okay, the white blood cells are going there and they're attacking that ink. Phagocytosis, they're, they're enveloping the ink and they're keeping it there until the white blood cell dies. Then another white blood cell has to come in until it dies. Then another one. And it's just doing that for your whole life. Wouldn't that be a drain on your immune system? That's my question. My theory would be there that if you are constantly having white blood cells going and attacking that ink all through your life, your body's having to produce that and it's constantly going to that tattoo site, wherever it is on your body, which would mean that you'd have a lowered immune system because now there's something that they're always over there attacking. It'd be like saying, okay, our military is ready against an invasion coming anywhere on our country rather than, oh, there's a diversion over here and our military, half of it's over here or something, or even a tenth of it is over there constantly fighting this enemy on that front over there. See, it just makes sense to me. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I mean, I didn't see any of the stuff I researched. I didn't see them talking about that it's a drain on the immune system, but I think it would be. Hmm. What about these people that have tattoos all over their bodies? The whole sleeve thing, the whole way around the arm, they have it on their legs, they have it on this arm over here, it's going up the neck, it's got one up here on the eye, and they... All of those are requiring white blood cells. And they have the same level of health as me, not having any tattoos? I doubt that very highly. But let's go back to the scriptures now and see what else the Bible says. If the science doesn't convince you, then I'm going to convince you from the scriptures. Leviticus chapter 19. I mean, this one's just crystal clear, but we'll get into the arguments about it because I know that there will be arguments about it. Leviticus 19. Every sinner out there learns the uh, condemnations in scripture. And they learn to try to how to get around that so that they can go on with their sin. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. The Lord told the children of Israel under the law in the Old Testament, don't print any marks upon you. I say, okay, here's how it doesn't work. No, I'm going to tell you how I know you're going to answer. Okay, because I've dealt with people for many years. That doesn't apply to Christians. Here's one of the arguments. That doesn't apply to Christians because it's in the Old Testament under the law. Okay? Here's how I answer that. Okay? Then where in the New Testament is that law undone? You see, back under the law, there was the doctrine of unclean and clean meats. You're to eat clean animals, not unclean animals. But in the New Testament, Peter is up on the housetop up there. And he sees this curtain come down from heaven. It's got all kinds of animals in it. And the Lord says, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. And he says, Not so, Lord. Nothing uncommon is coming to my mouth. And the Lord says, What I have cleansed, that call not thou common. You say, But that's about Gentiles, Gentiles and Jews getting saved. Well, then why does it say over in 1 Timothy, Paul writing, and he says, Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Huh, talking about eating creatures. See, it's not just a, a symbolic of God cleansing the unclean Gentiles. No, it's talking about God setting, saying that rule no longer applies to you. You don't have to. If you're Jewish, you can eat whatever you want now, as long as you give God thanks for it. There's no, new, there's no thing in the New Testament there that you have to still continue to keep the law. Now, you can't eat things that are strangled, and, and you have to abstain from blood. Okay, in other words, don't just eat raw things that are strangled. You have to properly butcher animals before you eat that. That is there. Acts chapter 15 talks about that. 
But what I'm saying is, in order for you to say, I can ignore something in the Old Testament, you have to have a New Testament verse of Scripture, a portion of Scripture that undoes that law from the Old Testament. If God said to the Jew back under the law, hey, you're not supposed to uh, print any marks upon you, then there should be something in the New Testament that says you can print marks upon you. Pretty simple, all right? And I already showed you from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the very beginning of this study, you're not to defile the temple of the Holy Ghost. You can't do that with tattoos. You disobey that scripture. There's no such thing as some kind of a, you know, I'm going to get an all-natural organic tattoo that's got, you know, it's made out of cherry juice for red and grape juice for purple and, you know, black currant for black or something like that or whatever. And I'll have, you know, fruit juice injected into my, uh, you know, dermis layer. Uh, no, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. But here's another way to prove it. Okay? Um, the Bible says about we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses in, in the New Testament. What does that mean? There are a lot of people, if you study church history, you'll see that people all through church history have gone through similar experiences as you, as you go through. So you can have some uh, historical backing for what you're doing. I've showed this hymn book in another study, Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs, uh, Melody Publications, right there. And um, we were singing a hymn in here the other day, um, Praise to the Lord, the the Almighty, the King of Creation, and um, and read about the history of it. It was written in 1665. I mean, you know that go, that's going back there a little ways, almost 400 years ago, over over well over 300 years ago, and you can sing it today, and it has the exact same meaning. So I could, if I had a time machine, I could get in my time machine, I could go back to the 17th century there, and I could sing with Christians wherever they're meeting at. And we would sing it, and we'd have great fellowship. I can go back to when Martin Luther wrote uh, A Mighty Fortress is Our God in the 16th century, early 1500s. Hey, still good today. So what I'm saying is, okay, you say, well, we'll just forget the Bible. What does the Bible say? Forget that for a minute. What about the compass being compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Can you show me throughout church history where Christians were getting tattoos? You see, the Bible says that some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils in the last days. We're in the last days right now. Huh. Um, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. There's a whole lot of things saying that the church is going to fall apart. Professing Christianity is going to be in very rough shape when you get to the end of the church age. So how is it that all of a sudden now we have Christians getting tattoos to witness to the lost? Where is this at in church history? It's not there. It just simply isn't there. I mean, you should. there should be some kind of historical argument there that you can look back and you can see, yeah, Christians have been doing this for a long time. It didn't just show up in the last 20, 30 years. And with tattooing, I'd say it's only probably 10 years old. You know, unless you go back to some of the real fringe, you know, professing Christians. Um, so you have to be careful of that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and again, I think the simple, you know, most basic argument, if you just want to ignore Leviticus 19, which is problematic, but if you just want to ignore that, um, how do you get around the thing of not defiling the temple of the Holy Ghost? When science is coming out and saying, I really strongly suggest you don't get that stuff injected into your body. We don't even know what all the chemicals are. You know, automotive paint companies are making tattoo ink. And it's the same basic stuff. You know, I mean, again, some tattooed person come up and I'm out there painting my vehicle with some spray paint. And I say, oh, hey, I, you know, your you know, arm's looking a little bit blank there. Let me help you. And I take my spray paint and, and spray it on their arm. They say, what are you doing? And, ah, I have to go clean that off. No, it's just a tattoo. I colorized your arm. <laughs> it's really absurd. What's well, my culture, man? My culture. Where'd your culture come from? That's another argument I'd like to give you. But turn in your Bible to Revelation chapter 7. Oh, it's a, it's a cultural thing. You just don't understand. You're some mountain hillbilly or 
whatever else. And so it's not your culture, not in your culture to uh, get tattooed or something. Okay, well then who was getting tattooed 100 years ago? Again, look back 100 years ago, 50 years ago even, 60 years ago. Where were the people getting tattooed? Why all of a sudden does tattooing just show up and it's becoming more and more popular? I think it's 24% of Americans right now have tattoos. And I see people just, this doesn't even make any sense. These people don't look like the tattoo type. I mean, when I was young, you get Harley bikers or, you know, military guys or whatever, military veterans, they would have tattoos, but most other people wouldn't. And then it was just, you know, a little tattoo up here or something or one on the forearm or something. But this stuff now, the tattoo craze is exploding. Why? Huh. Revelation chapter 7. Um, again, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Jews in the Old Testament and a Jew that's following the Torah today, they can't get tattooed if they're going to be in line with their uh, scriptures. But look what happens in the future. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the, of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Why didn't God just put a seal on their foreheads? It had to be in. I remember this whole thing, this uh, nutty nonsense, this Timothy LaHaye uh, Left Behind series, and they had these people that they could see a seal upon the forehead, you know, cross or something like this. Boy, that's deadly dangerous. It doesn't say upon the forehead, it says in the forehead and your King James Bible. The ones from the Vatican, Lord only knows what those things have in them. Probably one of them says on the forehead. Uh, they do it with Revelation 13. Um, speaking of Revelation 13, let's go there. But God supernaturally seals these Jews, the 144,000, with a seal in their forehead. God doesn't print a mark upon them. Because if he did, it would be violating the Torah. Hmm. But in between the Torah and the time of Jacob's trouble, there's that nice happy period called the, called the church age where tattooing is completely fine in God's sight, even though God never said to do it in the scriptures. I don't think so. Um, I mean, if I was kind of crazy, and most people think I am, I'd almost be tempted to say that the tattoo thing, the tattoo craze, is leading people to be softened up for a coming mark of the beast. Hmm. Probably nothing to it. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. Huh. Almost like the devil's trying to counterfeit what God's doing huh. with the 144,000 sealed Jews. If you understand anything about the devil, you'll understand he counterfeits every single thing that God does. Talked about that in other studies. Verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the na name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. Um, very familiar portion of scripture if you've been saved for any length of time. Uh, stay away from the number six, six, six. But look at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Here it's important. You say, well, it's just some kind of an implanted microchip and you can't see anything. Not quite. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So you see, the mark of the beast, is it's not just some implanted microchip up in there, a neural link or something like you know, the devil Elon Musk is coming up with. Uh, no, 
there's something, it could be like that, yes, but there's also a mark upon the forehead. Now, I have to get a little bit bigoted here. Um, there's a certain church out there that uh, has been putting a mark upon the forehead, a little uh, ash thing on Wednesdays, um, and they put it up there on the forehead. There's no connection, though, I'm sure. <laughs> but what do we see? A mark upon the forehead. So it's in the hand, in the right hand, uh, which there, there's all kinds of technologies that they can do it right now, implanted microchips and even just tapping your hand and scanning your hand and whatever else. But there's going to be one that's in the forehead, but also upon the forehead. Could it be a tattoo? They could tattoo a QR code up there, your uh, particular QR code that's you know, assigned to you or something like that. Hmm. Could actually just be the mark or the uh, Ash Wednesday thing that the Catholic Church does. I don't know, but it could be a tattoo. Hmm. Did a, a uh, sermon years ago and they were actually mockingly showing people getting QR codes tattooed to their foreheads right there. <laughs> well, you won't be laughing when you get... Uh, when the time of Jacob's trouble gets started and you see what all is going on. All right, so if tattoos are fine, why would the devil be interested in putting a mark upon the forehead of people? You say, well, yeah, there's bad tattoos, but there's good tattoos. I have a very hard time understanding that. Um, but here's the argument that tattoo people love to use, and I'm going to refute this here. As we are closing this study, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16. Okay, this is where Jesus has a tattoo. We can prove that Jesus is tattooed. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's the tattoo. It's on his thigh. That's not what it says. Okay, that's a ridiculous argument. It says, look at the verse there, look at the text, on his vesture and on his thigh. Okay, it's telling you it's on the vesture. It's on his clothing, and then it gives you the location of where this is written. All right, Jesus is not wearing a miniskirt. All right, um, he's not got some kind of a thing there, King of Kings and Lord of Lords tattooed to his thigh, and he has to walk through all, all of eternity, and he's got a miniskirt on, and look at my tattoo, is it nice? It's not fading, is it? You know, I mean, people in their desperation to justify their sin of tattooing, they'll actually try to blaspheme Jesus Christ and say he's got a tattoo. <sighs> Insanity. What these people do. You say, but you didn't prove anything. Okay, let's go back to Revelation. Uh, chapter 1. Um, okay, let me see. I don't have this in my uh, thing here, my notes, but uh, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks was... Lent, was and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to um, his thigh, because you have to see his tattoo. No, um, it's uh, clothed with a garment down to the foot. You understand? Okay, so uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, um, it's a long garment. It's on his vesture, on his thigh. On his, that's the area where the, it's written on the vesture, 
on his clothing. And I looked up a lot of the new versions. Most say something similar, at least that you're not going to get it tattooed on his thigh. Now, again, there could be some version out there. I, I don't have all of them down here in my collection, but it could be that there's some version that said tattooed on his thigh or something, and that's what all the tattoo freaks, you know, say, oh, we'll do that. Um, I don't know. But uh, you can't get it from the scriptures. And you better be real careful when you blaspheme Jesus Christ like that to justify your sins. Right? It is a sin to get a tattoo. You are defiling yourself. You are going against the scriptures. You are going against church history. Um, I mean, there's just no justification for it. And this whole thing just showed up, just pops up, and now everybody, oh, I, I feel so much like I have to get one. What are you doing? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Turn there in your Bible. That's where we will finish this study. Um, again, it blows my mind how many people just fall for things because, well, I know lots of other people do it. Here's what you're guilty of. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, you're not to be a stumbling block either. We go to that passage. But uh, you're not supposed to do anything that would cause a weaker brother to stumble and to fall. What if somebody is truly weak in their health and they go and they get a tattoo and they have an infection? That's a problem. You're causing people to sin. Well, I think I'm just going to go ahead and just ignore you because you're just a crazy preacher, you're legalistic, you're hateful, you're a Pharisee, you're a, you know, yeah, go down through the list. I'm going to go and I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to get some toxic chemicals injected into my dermis layer in here and, and uh, I think it's going to work out. And I don't believe in the thing of immune system and diminished immune system and whatever else, so forget you. Well, okay. <laughs> Thine own wickedness will correct thee. Okay, go ahead. Go get your tattoo. You say, well, Brother Brian, um, I believe completely in what you're saying, but it, Brother, I have some tattoos. What am I supposed to do about it? Well, um, quite frankly, uh, something I wish that I could discover, and I've, I've thought about this, and I'd, I'd have to have a, a guinea pig with a tattoo to try to come up with something, which this isn't even, I haven't done the, anything real research-wise with this, but I've thought, I wonder if there'd be a way to um, somehow remove the ink. Um, I know that uh, slippery elm bark. I, I'll just say this for you out there. I'm, you know, you can take it or leave it, whatever you want here. I have no experience with this, but I know a few things in the natural world. Slippery elm bark is a drawing type of an herb. Okay, um, you can put make a poultice out of it, which just means the dry herb and some moisture, some uh, water, or there's other carrier type of things, different types of oils. Make a poultice out of it and put it over top of your tattoo. And maybe you might have a chance at pulling some things out. Okay, I had an infection the one time, put some slippery elm bark on, you know, a pad, taped it on there, and it actually pulled some of the infection out. And there was this weird pussy stuff in with the slippery elm bark. I thought, whoa, okay, that actually works. That might be a possibility. Um, there, maybe you could use activated charcoal to try to get, because activated charcoal will find toxins in the body, latch onto the toxins and help you eliminate the toxins. That might be another possibility. Um, you know, try different things natural health wise. Maybe there's something out there. I have no idea. If I could discover that, I think it'd be great to bring that out and whatever. You know, maybe somebody could make some kind of a salve or something that would diminish the ink, uh, get, you know, start to get it pulled out of the body, maybe a sauna experience, you know, where you're detoxing through sweating. I have no idea. And I'm not going to go get a tattoo or something just so I can experiment with natural health ways to get rid of it. I'm not going to do that for one second. But um, on the issue of you have tattoos, uh, what do you do now? Well, you have to live with your sin. Um, right down here, can't show it on camera, but right above my belt on my right side, uh, I have a big scar, about that long. And um, that scar came from years of eating junk food and working at a toxic factory. 
and uh, my appendix burst. And um, I had to go to the hospital and, and emergency surgery and all kinds of things, and, and they removed it. And now my immune system is diminished. I don't have the immunity that my wife and my son have. Um, if we get sick, if there's, which doesn't happen very much, thankfully, because we're very strict about natural health. Um, but if we do get sick, typically they will get better quicker than I do because my immune system is down from where it should be. I lost a part of my body due to my sins in my past. And I think it, was, it wasn't just, well, your you know, toxic stuff and junk food that you were eating and whatever. No, I was living a very sinful lifestyle at the time. And I remember the senior pastor of the church where I grew up, um, don't agree with him in a lot of areas. Uh, he was very uh, new version using and whatever else, uh, very wicked along those lines. But um, he did say something that was very profound at the time. And he said, sometimes God has to put you on your back so that you look up. And uh, I was not very close to the Lord at that point in time. And uh, thankfully, the Lord saved me many years after that incident of being in the hospital with my appendix bursting. And the um, Lord got me out of it. But now I have a scar. And if you have tattoos from your past, you, you did some dumb things and whatever, went out, got drunk with some buddies, went and got a tattoo or something. Um, bad, bad idea. Very bad idea. I mean, you know, look at a video sometime. If you haven't got a, gotten a tattoo or you want to, to see it, um, look at a video. You know, they show the skin and this little, this little thing with all these little needles and it's just going poke, 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 poke through the skin. Getting down into the dermis layer. Just poke, 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 real fast. You know, like that. And God's for that? Um, you better be careful about blaspheming Jesus Christ. Oh, I could see Jesus, you know, if he was, if they were available in his day, he'd have laid there and gotten one or something. I remember there was some stupid Hollywood movie or, you know, wicked movie that came out and it was about Abraham and Sarah and they showed Sarah and she had tattoos on her face right here or something. And I just thought, you wicked people, just, you know, perverting the right ways of the Lord. I mean, nobody uh, would have gotten tattoos two, three hundred years ago in the civilized world. I mean, people that are pagans and out there, you know, dealing with devil spirits and things and voodoo and all kinds of other witchcraft practices. Yeah, they would do horrible things, cuttings in their flesh and, and things like that. Printing marks upon them. But Christians, no, no. Keep your body as clean as possible, brethren, because if you don't, um, you're not going to be very effective for the Lord. I can tell you that. And um, if you have a tattoo, do your best to cover it up. I knew a guy, uh, actually my brother-in-law's father, he passed away many years ago, and he was in the Navy, and he got a bikini girl on his forearm like this, big bikini girl, about that long, you know, from here to here, and uh, ended up getting saved later on in life. And I uh, went off to seminary and became a, a Bible college professor. And he wore long sleeve shirts. Didn't have a choice. What a rotten testimony, walking around with some filthy tattoo. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, and again, you know, I just have to say this, too. Um, who goes and gets a tattoo and says, you know, walks in and says, Hey, what do you have that's uh, going to look good when I'm 80 years old? I mean, I'm only 25 years old right now, but I really want something that's going to age well. You know, I want something that'll look good when I get older. They don't do that. They want to live for the here and now. They're not even thinking about old age. And that's of the Lord. Come on. So, uh, if you have gotten a tattoo in the past... Well, you have to put up with it. It's a shame you made a stupid decision. Um, try to keep it covered up and do your best to really work hard on your immune system because, quite frankly, I don't see any way around it. I think that your immune system has been compromised. Your body's constantly going to be fighting that foreign invasion, that foreign thing that's into your dermis layer. Terrible. If you haven't gotten a tattoo and you have some people, some friends or family members or whatever that are trying to talk you into it, after seeing this study, I pray that you say, absolutely not. I'm not going to have known carcinogens injected into my skin. <laughs> um, no, 
No. Well, uh, but the medical establishment hasn't come out and really um, decried it as being a harmful thing. Yeah, because it takes them 20 or 30 years a lot of times to come out with studies like that. A lot of the medical procedures, it's years that things go before they finally say, oh, yeah, um, hey, recent discoveries, you know. Oh, you mean the stuff you've been working on for 30 years? Yeah, that. So I do hope that you have been persuaded to not get a tattoo. Uh, if I didn't love you, I'd, I would just simply say, hey, do whatever you want. What if it feels good, do it, man, you know. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Well, that's Aleister Crowley. Yeah, you probably don't want to uh, follow that guy's philosophies. So <laughs> that is going to be it for this study. Um, please do take heed to what I'm saying. I am not standing here before you as a perfect sinless man that uh, knows everything and I've, I can't be corrected or whatever else. Uh, no, very far from it. I stand here before you as a man who um, has a lot of scars and lives in a lot of pain from a lot of sin in my past mental scars, physical scars, and I want to do my very best to keep you from messing up like I did. Uh, praise the Lord I never got a tattoo. I thank the Lord for that. But I've certainly done other stupid things in my past that I now regret. And I raised my son telling him of my mistakes and judging things out there in the world and showing him things and saying, son, this is why this is wrong. Look what the scriptures say, what science says. That's how I raised my son, because I want my son to have a better life than I did. And I want you to have a better life than I've had. We will see you in the next video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.